For the Sunday play, we present <coughs> The Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker. Now, this year may well be the quatrocentenary of Decker's birth. He was born about the year 1570. In this pleasant comedy of the gentle craft, which was first performed at court on the 1st of January in the year 1600, the part of Simon Eyre, the shoemaker, is played by the late Sir Donald Wolfitt, who also speaks the prologue. The Shoemaker's Holiday. professors of the gentle craft of what degree soever, kind gentlemen and honest boon companions, I present you here with a merry conceited comedy called The Shoemaker's Holiday, as it was acted by my Lord Admiral's players on New Year's Day in the year 1600 before the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty for the mirth and pleasant matter by Her Highness graciously accepted. Take all in good worth that is well intended for nothing is purposed but mirth. Mirth lengtheneth long life, which with all other blessings I heartily wish you. Farewell. My Lord Mayor. My Lord Lincoln. You have sundry time feasted myself and many courtiers more. Seldom or never can we be so kind to make requital of your courtesy about leaving this. I hear my nephew Lacey is much affected to your daughter Rose. True, my good lord. And she loves him so well that I mislike her boldness in the chase. Take heed, my lord. Advise you what you do. A very unthrift lives not in the world that is my nephew. But I'll tell you what... It is now almost a year since he requested to travel countries for experience. Scant had he journeyed through half Germany, but all his coin was spent, his men cast off, his bills embezzled, and my jolly cuz, ashamed to show his bankrupt presence here, became a shoemaker in Wittenberg. <laughs> a goodly science for a gentleman of such descent. And yet your nephew Roland might do well now he hath learned an occupation. Aye, but I have a better trade for him. Oh? I thank his majesty. He hath appointed him chief colonel of these companies mustered in London and the shires about to serve his highness in these wars of France. See where he comes. Nephew, what news with you? His highness will decree his ship for France with all my powers. He would not for a million, but I should land at Dieppe within four days. Then, nephew Lacey, in what forwardness are all your companies? All well prepared. The men of Hertfordshire lie at Mile End. Suffolk and Essex train in Tothill Fields. The Londoners and those of Middlesex all gallantly prepared in Finsbury with frolic spirits long for their parting hour. My Lord of Lincoln, and if it please your nephew Lacey come to the Guildhall, he shall receive his pay. And twenty pounds besides, my brethren, will freely give him. To approve our loves we bear unto my lord, your uncle, here. I thank your honor. Thanks, my good lord mayor. At the guild hall, we will expect your coming. Nephew, that twenty pound he doth bestow for joy to rid you from his daughter Rose. Oh. But cousin Lacey, now here are none but friends. I would not have you cast an amorous eye upon so mean a project as the love of a gay, wanton, painted citizen. But, Uncle, she... I know this churl, even in the height of scorn, doth hate the mixture of his blood with thine. I care not. I pray thee, do thou so. Remember, cuz, what honorable fortunes wait on thee. My lord, I will so guide my actions in pursuit of France as shall add glory to the lace's name. Cuz, for those words... Here's thirty Portuguese. How gladly would my uncle have me gone. Say, cousin, who be these? These whining chains of these whining. Away with this whimpering, this puling, these blubbering tears of wet eyes. I'll get thy husband discharged. I warrant these sweet chains. No, go to. Master, here be the captain. Peace, hearts. Captain, 
you've been to Cavaliers and the Colonels. Peace, sir. Peace, my fine fur. Now stand by with your fishery fishery away. I'm a man of the best presence. I'll speak to them and they were popes. Gentlemen, captains, colonels, commanders, brave men, brave leaders. Now may it please you to give me audience. I am Simon Eyre, the mad shoemaker of Tower Street. As uh, this Simon wench Eyre. with the mealy mouth that'll never tire is my wife, I can tell you. Now here's Hodge, my man and my foreman. Aye, sir. Here's Ferk, my fine firking journeyman. Aye, sir. And, and this is Blubber Jane. <laughs> now all we come to be suitors for this honest wraith. Keep him at home. And as I am a true shoemaker and a gentleman of the gentle craft, Buy spurs yourself, and I'll find your boots these seven years. Seven years, husband? Peace, midwife. Peace, I know what I do. Peace. Truly, Master Colonel, you shall do God good service to let Rafe and his wife fight together. And he say, else shall I be undone? Truly, my friend, it lies not in my power. The Londoners are pressed, paid, and set forth by the Lord Mayor. I cannot change a man. Oh, oh, why then you were as good be a corporal as a colonel if you cannot discharge one good fellow? Well said, melancholy college. Truly, gentlemen, it were ill done for such as you to stand so stiffly against a poor young wife. She's new married. But let that pass. Her husband is a young man, but newly entered, but let that go. Oh, oh, yeah. no. Away with your fishery, fishery, your bottles and your eddy bottles. Peace, me friend. Silence, fishery, bump, bump, Peace, scoundrels. Now, you see this man, Rafe? Captains, you will not release him. Well, let him go. He's a proper shot. Let him vanish. Now, peace, Jane, dry thy tears. They'll make his powder dankish. Take him, brave men. Hector of Troy with an acne to him. Hercules and Termagant, scoundrels. Prince Arthur's round table by the Lord of Ludgate, near fed such a tall, such a dapper swordsman. By the life of Pharaoh, a brave, resolute swordsman. <laughs> oh, peace, Jane. I say no more, mad knaves. I'm glad, good master, Lair, it is my hat to meet so resolute a soldier. Is thy name Rafe? Yes, sir. Give me thy hand. Thou shalt not want, as I am a gentleman. <laughs> Woman, be patient. God, no doubt, will send thy husband safe again. But he must go. His country's quarrel says it shall be so. Nephew, the Lord Mayor and the Aldermen at the Guild Hall attend our coming. I do request you with all speed you may to hasten thither. Come, Uncle, let us go. Rafe, I see your colors. Alas. My oh, husband, she cannot speak for weeks. Oh, peace, wife. Now, peace, you crack groats. You mustard tokens. Disquiet not the brave soldier. Go thy ways, wife. Aye, aye, you bid him go. What shall I do when he is gone? What are you doing with me, or my fellow wives? Be not idle. Now, let me see thy hand, Jane. And this fine hand, this white hand, these pretty fingers must spin, must card, must work. Work, you bombast cotton candle queen. Work for your living with a pox to you. Hold thee, Rafe. Here's five sixpences for thee. Oh, master. Fight for the honor of the gentle craft, for the gentlemen shoemakers, the courageous cordwainers, the flower of St. Martin's, the mad knaves of Bedlam, Fleet Street, Tower Street, and Whitechapel. Crack me the crowns of the French knaves, a box on them. Crack them. Fight by the Lord of Ludgate. Fight, my fine boy. Yay, master, yay. Hey, right. Here's three toppences. Thank you for two carrying into France. The third shall wash hell souls apart. For sorrow is dry. Uh, for my sake, turn the bitey mon Jews. Right. I am heavy apart in the chip. Here's a shilling for thee. Oh, thank you, Hodge. God send thee to cram thy slops with French crowns and thy enemies' bellies with bullets. I thank you, Master, and I thank you all. Now, gentle wife, my loving, lovely Jane, rich men at parting give their wives rich gifts, jewels and rings to grace their lily hands. Thou knowest our trade makes rings for women's heels. Here, take this pair of shoes, cut out by Hodge, Stitched by my fellow first, seen by myself, made up and pinked with letters for thy name. Wear them, my dear Jane, for your husband's sake. And every morning when thou pullest them on, remember me and pray for my return. Oh, my way. Thank you. 
lie down upon this flowery bank and make a garland for my lace's head. These pinks, these roses, and these violets, these blushing jilly flowers, these marigolds, carry not half such beauty in their cheeks as the sweet countenance of my lacy dove. Oh, my most unkind father, here as a thief am I imprisoned for my dear lacy's sake within these walls which by my father's cost were build it up for better purposes. Here must I languish. For him that doth as much lament, I know, mine absence, as for him I pine in woe. Good morrow, young Mistress Rose. I'm sure you make that garland for me against I shall be lady of the harvest. Sybil, what news at London? Oh, none but good. Well? My Lord Mayor, your father, yes. and Master Phil Potch, your uncle, yes. and Master Scotch, your cousin, and Mistress Sprigbottom by Doctor's Commons, do all yes. by my troth send you most hearty commendations. Did Lacey send kind greetings to his love? Oh, yes, out of cry. By my trunks, I scant knew him. What? Here I wore a scarf, and here a scarf. Here a bunch of feathers, yes. and here precious stones and jewels, and a pair of garters. Oh, monstrous. Like one of your yellow silk curtains at home here in old Ford House, here in Master Bellymount's chamber. Oh! I stood at our door in Cornhill, looked at him, he at me indeed, spake to him, but he not to me, not a word. Oh, Sybil! Merry Gut thought I with a wanion. He passed by me as proud Mary Ford. You grown humorous, thought I, and so shut the door, and then I came. Oh, Sybil, how dost thou my lady wrong? My Roland is as gentle as a lamb. No dove was ever half so mild as he. Mild? Yea, as a bushel of stamp crab. Oh, Sybil. He looked upon me as sour as virtue. Oh. Go thy ways, thought I. Thou mayst be much in my gaskins, but nothing in my nether stocks. This is your fault, mistress, to love him that loves not you. Will my love leave me then and go to France? I know not that. But I'm sure I see him stalk before the soldiers. By my troth, he's a proper man. But he is proper that proper doth. Let him go snick up, young mistress. Get thee to London, Sybil, and learn perfectly whether my lacy go to France or no. Do this, and I will give thee for thy pains my cambric apron and my Romish gloves, my purple stockings. And a stomacher. Oh, oh say, <laughs> thou wilt do this, Sybil, for my sake. Oh, will I, quotha? By my troth, yes, I'll go. Oh. A cambric apron, gloves, a pair of purple stockings, and a stomacher. I'll sweat in purple, mistress, for you. I'll take anything that comes in God's name. Oh, rich, a cambric apron. Oh, face and habit, up tails all. <laughs> their desired love. It is no shame for Roland Lacey, then, to clothe his cunning with the gentle craft, and in the semblance of a Dutch shoemaker, this early morning walk the streets of London, that, thus disguised, I may unknown possess the only happy presence of my rose. For her have I forsook my charge in France, incurred the king's displeasure, and stirred up rough hatred in mine uncle Lincoln's breast. But thus it must be, for her cruel father, hating the single union of our souls, did secretly convey my rose from London to bar me of her presence. But I trust fortune and this disguise will further me once more to view her beauty, gain her sight. 
Yonder in Tower Street with Air the Shoemaker, me and I are wild to work. I know the trade. I learnt it when I was in Wittenberg. The gentle craft is living for a man. <laughs> and lick up the crumbs of my table, yet will not rise to see my walks cleansed. Come out, your powder beef queens. What man? What man? Mumble crush. Come out, your fat midriff swipe belly whores, and sweep me these kennels that the noisome stench offend not the nose of my neighbors. What fert, I say? What hodge? Open my shop windows. What fert, I say? Oh, oh master, help. Is it you that speak barn dog on bedlam this morning? Oh, 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 I was in a dream. Muse what madman was got into the street so early. Have you drunk this morning, yet the throat is so clear? Ah, well said, Ferg, well said, Ferg. Now to work, my fine knave, to work, to work. Wash thy face and have the more blessed. I'll let them wash my face at the least. Away, you slubber, now vaunt, you scoundrel. Oh. Good morrow, Hodge. Good morrow, my fine foreman. Oh, master, good morrow. Oh, you dirty stir. Uh, he's a fair morning. Hey, good morrow, Ferk. I could have slept this hour. Eh? Oh, he's a brave day to walk. Oh, haste to work, my fine foreman. Haste to work. Aye, okay, master, aye. Master. master. Oh, Miss Joyce, dust we my fellow Hodge talk a fair weather. Let us pray for good leather. Let clowns and ploughboys and those that work in the fields pray for brave days. <laughs> we work in a dry shop. What care I if it rain? Cold the wind and wet the rain, thank you be our good speed. Hell is the weather that brings no gain, nor helps good hearts. Whether that ring is no gain or helps good hearts in vain. How now, Dame Marjorie? Can you see the rise? Chip and go and call up the drabs, you maids. See the rise? I hope this time enough is early enough for any woman to be seen abroad. I marvel how many wives in Tower Street are up so soon. God's sleep is not noon. Here's a yawning. Peace, Marjorie, peace. Where's Cicely Bunkley get your maid? She has a privy fault. She farts in her sleep. Call the queen up. If my men want shoe thread, I'll swinge her in a stirrup. Oh, Lord, yonder's a brother of the gentle craft. If he bear not to use his bones, I'll forfeit my bones. He's some poplandish workman. Iring, good man. A peace worker, hard will. Let him pass, let him vanish. Iring, master, that I may learn some gibble gum. Hey, they a fine work. We journeymen in now. Good master, good master, to make us work the faster. Oh, well, now. Hey, husband, you best follow your men, we shall see what will come on. We have not many now, but we must entertain every butter box. Shame. Oh, God, if my master follow your counsel, he'll consume little beef. He should be glad of men and he can catch them. Oh, George, that he shall. Oh, God, ah, a proper man, and I warrant. A fine workman. <coughs> master, farewell. Dame, adieu. Right. If such a man as he cannot find work, Hodge is not for you. No, no, stay, my fine Hodge. Why, if Hodge is removed, Burke follows. If St. Hughes' bones shall not be set to work, I may prick mine all in the walls and go fly. Yeah, fare ye well, no, Master. No, Goodbye, no, Dad. No, no, no. Tell him, my fine Hodge, my brisk woman. Yeah, no, no, no. Stay, Burke. Hey, let him go. Peace, you pudding broth. By the Lord of Ludgate, I love my men as my life. Oh, let that pass. Peace, you galley morphy. Hodge. If he if he want work, I'll hire him. Now, one of you to him. Who oh, stay? He comes to us. Good and dark, mister. Here, uh, friend. What's thy name? Hunt. 
Hans Müller. Ah, well, give me thy hand, lad, welcome. Hodge, entertain him. Firk, aye, bid him welcome. Aye, aye, Come, aye, hands. Yes. Yeah, no. run, wife. Bid your maids, your tullybubs, make ready my fine men's breakfast and bring in beer. Oh. To him, Hodge. Aye. And thou art welcome, Danke. Use thyself friendly, for we're good fellows. If not, thou shalt be fought with work, thou bigger than a giant. <laughs> giant yeah. drunk with work, thou gargantuan. <laughs> no master keeps no cowards until we. Oh, boy! Bring him in the old block. Here's a new journeyman. Quick, snipper, snapper away. Quick, scour thy throat. Thou shalt wash it with Castilian liquor. <laughs> <laughs> See, now this beer comes hopping in well. Come, give me a can. Now have two of thee hands. Here, Hodge. Ah, Here, Perk. Uh, drink your mad Greeks and work like two Trojans. And pray for Simon Eyre, the shoemaker. Drink hands ah, that welcome. Round, 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 and here kindly to thee. Then the dirt for thank you so. And down is Mary Lee. Down, a, down, hey, down, down. And my men's breakfast not ready. Trip and go, you oh. soused conger. Away! Ow! Oh. Come, you mad Hyperboreans. Follow me, Hodge. Aye, Follow me, hands. Sure. Come after me, fine folk. Right, sir. And ere your breakfast be ready to work. To work a while. I don't Ya can see. Ya can see. Not far. This way with winged feet he fled from death, whilst the pursuing hound sending his steps find out his highway to destruction. Besides, the miller's boy told me even now that long he could not hold. If it be so, Cousin Hammond, it's best we trace these meadows by old Ford. Oh, cousin, let's away. Good idea. Right, come on. Wilt thou prove a forester? Upon some, no. Forester, go by. No space, <laughs> mistress. The deer came running into the barn, through the orchard, and over the pale. I wot well, I looked as pale as a new cheese to see him. <laughs> but whip, says Goodman Pinclose, my lord mayor shall eat of him anon when he comes. Hark! Hark, the hunters come. You best take heed. They'll have a saying to you for this deed. God save you, fair ladies. Lady, you're so gross. You came not a buck this way? No, but two does. And which way went they, Faith? We'll hunt at those. At those? Upon some, no. Upon some, I. Ah, this way he ran indeed, fair Mistress Rose. Our game was lately in your orchard scene. And can you advise which way he took his flight? Trust me, not I. He fled some other way. Which way, my sugar candy, can you show? Come up, good honey, stops upon some now. Oh. Why do you stay and not pursue your game? A dear, more dear, is found within this place. But not the dear, sir, which you had in chase. I chased the deer, but this deer chases me. <laughs> the strangest hunting that ever I see. What? Uh, Master Hammond, welcome to Old Court. God speak oh. his hands off. <laughs> he was my lord. I hear you had ill luck, Master Hammond, and lost your game. It is true, my lord, ma'am. I'm sorry for the same... What gentleman is this? Oh, my brother-in-law. The Lord Mayor. You're welcome both. Since fortune offers you into my hands, you shall not part from hence until you have refreshed your wearied limbs. Go, Sybil, cover the board. You shall be guest to no good cheer, but even a hunter's feet. Oh, I thank your Lordship. Cousin, on my life, 
So I lost Benson. I shall find a wife. Tell you what to say, Gunhans. Yeah. This ship that coming from Candy is all full by hot sacrament for sugar, civet, almonds, cambric, and all dingen. Thousand, thousand ding. Nempty dance. Nempty for you, maester. There be the bills for lading. Your maester, Simon Eyre, shall a hook over. What say you, Hans? What says the Dutch skipper? What second the rig and the cope and sloping? <laughs> laugh, Hodge, laugh. <laughs> uh, uh, mein lieber Bruder Fürst, uh, bringt Mr. Eyre zu den Sein und Swanekin. Sein? The Inn of the Sein of the Swanekin. Ah, oh. there shall you find this Dutch skipper and me. What say can you, Bruder Fürst? Do the torch. Come, skipper. Mm. Yeah, we're going to be the Bring him into the sign of the swan, quoth he. Ah. Huh. There's no knavery. Bring my master to buy a ship worth the lading of two or three hundred thousand pounds. Oh, well, that's, that's nothing. A trifle, a bauble, Hodge. The truth is, sir, uh-huh. that the merchant owner of the ship dare not show his head. Uh-huh. And therefore, this skipper that deals for him, for the love he bears to hands, offers my master air a bargain in the commodities. Uh, yay! But can my fellow Hans lend my master these twenty portentines as an earnest penny? Forty goose, thou yeah. wouldst say. Oh, gold coins. Here they be, sir. Ah, they tingle in my pocket like some merry old rebels. <laughs> Crap, Mum. Here comes me dame and me master. Sure, oh, she'll scold on me like for loitering this Monday. But all's one, let them all say what they can. Monday's our holiday. How's the wind and winter rain? Thank you, be our good speed. Could I be screw your heart out here for this your singing whistle, smart? Smart for me, dang why, dang why? Master, I hope you'll not suffer my dame to take down your journeyman. If you take me down, I'll take her up. Yeah, yeah, take her down to a buttonhole lower. <laughs> Please, uh, not I, Hodge. By the life of Pharaoh, by the Lord of Ludgate, by this beard, every hair whereof I value at a king's ransom, she shall not meddle but with her. Peace, you bombast oh. cotton candle queen. Away, queen of clubs. Quarrel not with me and my men, with me and my fine firk. I'll, I'll firk you if you do. Yeah, yeah, you may use me as you please with me, but Tom. Let it pass, let it vanish away. Peace. What? Am I not Simon Eyre? Are not these my brave men, brave shoemakers, all gentlemen of the gentle craft? Prince am I none, yet am I nobly born, as being the sole son of a shoemaker. Oh. Away, you rubbish. Vanish, melt. Most like your kitchen stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is well. I must be called rubbish kitchen stuff for a peck of names. No, no, no. Uh, uh, no, don't you start weeping, waiting woe for me. Master, I'll stay no longer. Here's a vanity and me shop clothes. <laughs> Adieu, Master. Hodge, <laughs> farewell. Nay, no, stay, Perk. Thou shalt not go oh, alone. No, oh, I right. pray, let him go. There'll be more maids than Morkin, more men than Hodge. And more fools than first. Oh, Lord. If I tarry now, I will be guts might be turned to shoot. And if I say, I pray God I may be turned to a Turk and sing Finsbury for boys to shoot at. Uh, no, no, stay, no, stay, no, my no, fine knaves. No, no, no. You arms of my trade, you pillars of my profession. Uh-huh. What shall I... Shall us tittle tattle's words make you forsake Simon Eyre? Yeah, no, let that pass. Avaunt kitchen stuff. <laughs> Rip your brown bread tannikin out of my sight. Move me not! Have not I obtained you from selling tripes in East Cheap well? and set you in my shop and made you hail fellow with Simon Eyre, the shoemaker? <laughs> and now do you deal thus with my journeyman? Look, your powder beef queen, on the face of Hodge. Now there's a face for a lord. Oh. And, 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 and look on Master Burke. Now here's a face for any lady in Christendom. Rip your chitterling a vaunt. Oh. Boy, bid the caps to the boar's head. Fill me a dozen cans of beer for my journeyman. A dozen cans? Mm. Oh, brave boats. Now I'll stay. And I. And boy, if the maid fills any more than two, he pays for them. 
A dozen cans of beer for my journeyman. Now, <laughs> oh, oh, hear oh, you, oh, my oh, mad Mesopotamians. <laughs> Soon you'll wash your livers with this liquor. So to work, to work a while. Ya can see. <laughs> ya can see. Well, ya can see me, let me alone, and I come to it. Well, master. Uh-huh. All this is from the fire. Do you remember the ship my fellow hands told you of? Yeah, well. The skipper and he are both drinking at the Swan. Here be his Portuguese coins to give earnest. Well? If you go through with it, you cannot choose but be a lord at least. You see, master, master. we've been bargaining with Skellum Scanderbag. Uh-huh. Can you touch Sprecham for a ship of silk cypress? Lighten with sugar candy. Please, Ferks. Silence, little battle. <laughs> fellow Hodge. Huh? I'll go through with it. Oh, I have here, fella Hamzy's fine coins. <laughs> Bring me to the sign of a swanikin. <laughs> Golden day, Mr. Air. This be the skipper that had the ship for merchandise. The commodity been good. Nimped it, uh, Mr. Nimped it. God of mercy, Hans. <laughs> Welcome, Skipper. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, where lies this ship of merchandise? The ship beating it the river. Uh-huh. Toby van Suka, Sievet, Almonds, Cambric, and a thousand, thousand kings. Uh-huh. Hot sacrament. Nimped it, Maester. He's a love of cover. Sweet master. Oh, sweet master. Sweet wares. Prunes, almonds, sugar candy, carrot roots, turnips. Oh, brave fat in me. Let not a man buy a nut meat, but yes, peace, Ferg. Come, Skipper. I'll go aboard with you. Yo, mister. Come, hands, follow me. Yo, mister. Skipper, thou shalt have my countenance in the city. <laughs> Together, yes, at the length, the lot of victory fell on our side. And Dodger, prithee, tell me, in this fight, how did my nephew Lacey bear himself? Uh, I mean, Lord, uh, your nephew Lacey was not there. Not there? No, me good Lord. 
Oh, sure, the mistake is... Me lord, I am advised that what I speak is true. To prove it so, his cousin Askew, that supplied his place, sent me for him from France, that secretly he might convey himself thither. If it even so, had you despised my love and spurned those favours which I with prodigal hand poured on his head? Procure the king to crown his giddy brows with ample honours. Send him chief colonel on all my hope thus to be dashed. Upon my life, I found out his plot. That old dog love that fawned upon him so. Love to that puling girl, his fair cheeked rose, the Lord Mayor's daughter, hath distracted him. Dodger, it is so. I fear so, me good lord. It is so. Nay, sure, it cannot be. I, I'm at my wit's end. Dodger. Yea, me lord. Thou art acquainted with my nephew's haunts. Spend this gold for thy pain. Oh, sir. Go seek him out. Watch at my Lord Mayor's. There, if he live, Dodger, thou shalt be sure to meet with him. Prithee, be diligent. Be circumspect. I warrant you, my Lord. Good master, Dodger. Here, good Lord. Ere you tell me all the news you bring, I will be bold with you to be a witness to a wedding not betwixt young Master Hammond and my daughter. Oh, stand aside. See where the lovers come. Can it be possible you love me so? No, Master Hammond. Within those eyeballs I espy apparent likelihoods of flattery. Pray now, let go my hand. Sweet Mistress Rose, I love you by this hand. Yes, hands off now. If flesh be frail, how weak and frail's your vow. What? Square they, Master Dodger? Sir, never doubt. Lovers are quickly in and quickly out. Sweet Rose, be not so strange in fancying me. Oh. Nay, never turn aside. Shun not my sight. If you will love me so, if not, farewell. Why, how now, lovers? Are you both agreed? Yes, faith, my lord. Tis well. Give me your hand. Lord. Give me yours, daughter. But, father, I... Oh, no. Both pull back. What means this, girl? I mean to live a maid. Will you still cross me, still be obstinate? <laughs> but, Master Hammond, no. If you will have her, I'll make her agree. Nay. Forced love is worse than hate to me. There is a wench keeps shop in the old change. To her will I. My good Lord Mayor, adieu. Old love for me. I have no luck with new... Now, Mamet, oh. you have well behaved yourself, oh, but you shall curse your coyness if I live. Oh. Who's within there? My lord. Sybil, see you convey your mistress straight to the old fort. Oh, no, father. I'll keep you straight enough. Oh, Go, father. minion, in. Oh, now, Master Dodger, what's the news you bring? The Earl of Lincoln, by me, greets your lordship, and earnestly requests you, if you can, inform him where his nephew Lacey keeps. Is not his nephew lazy now in France? No, I assure your lordship. But disguise lurks here in London. Lurks in London? Well, Master Dodger, you perhaps may start it. Be but the means to rid him into France. I'll give you a dozen angels for your pains. Oh, look. So much I love his honour, hate his nephew. And prithee, so inform thy lord from me. I take my leave. Farewell, good Master Dodger. They see in London. I dare pawn my life, my daughter knows thereof. And for that cause denied young Master Hammond in his love. Well, I am glad I sent her to Old Ford. God knows, tis late. To Guildhall I must hie. I know my brethren stay my company. They are to attend the choosing of a sheriff. Oh, I... oh, thou goes too fast for me, young Oh, Oh, sir. I pursue. I pray thee, run, run, do you hear? Run to Gildall and learn if my husband, Master Air, will take that worshipful vocation of Master Sheriff upon him. Will take it? Well, I be good, sir. Well, I go, and he should not take it. Perk swears to forswear him. Yes, pursuit. I go to Gildall. What do they win? Thou art too com compendious and tedious. How rare, Your Excellency's full of eloquence. Nay, when? Thou wilt make me melancholic. Oh, 
God forbid your worship should fall into that humour. Hmm. Huh. Right round. Oh, let me sit down now. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, and, and you here, Hans. Yo, mistress. And you here, Aye. Of course you think. Well, mistress, I should say, but the old town so sticks to the roof of my mouth, I can hardly lick it off. <laughs> Even what thou wilt, good arch. Dame is a fair name for any honest Christian. Let that fall. How dost thou, Hans? Oh, me thank you, Fro. Mm. Well, Hans and Torch, you see, God hath blessed your master, and third is, ever he comes to be master sheriff of London, as with all mortal, mm. you shall see, I will have some odd thing or other in accordance with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be your back friend, <laughs> but let that pass. And play the time I shall. Yo, yo, I, I shall, fro. Odge, they're not the length of my foot. No, ah. It's none of the biggest, so I thank God it's handsome enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pretty, let me have a pair of shoes made. Court, good Odge, wouldn't he, too? You shall. Mm. Are they never acquainted with a farthing girl maker, nor a French hood maker? No. Oh. I must enlarge me bum. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> How shall I look in a hood, I wonder? As a cat under a pillory. Purdy, ugly, I think. Oh, oh, very well, I warrant you, mistress. Yes. Very hot. Must get me a fan or else a mouth. So you had me to hide your wrinkled face. Fie <laughs> mm, upon it, how costly this world calling is. Purdy, but it's one of the wonderful works of God. I wouldn't deal with it. It's not so come yet. No, Dane. Then be not so sad. Let it pass and vanish, as my husband's worship says. Oh, ich bin frolic. Uh, let me see you so. Uh, mistress, will you drink a pipe of tobacco? Oh, by a colic, old curly. These filthy tobacco pipes are the most idle, slavering baubles that ever I've held. Oh, out of pocket. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, God bless us. Men look not like men that use. Why, right, mistress, mistress, look over there. Where? It's Jane's husband, fellow Rafe. Oh. Why? So oh, now lame. Oh, Hans, you yeah? make much of him. He's a brother of our trade, a oh. good workman, and a tall soldier. Uh, you'll be welcome, brother. Purdy, I knew him not. Uh, how dost thou, good Rafe? I'm glad to see thee well. I would, God, Jane, you saw me as well as when I went from London into France. Oh. And uh, Sir Rafe. What news? Well, what news in France? Tell me, good Hodge. First, what news in England? How does my Jane? Um, when didst thou see my wife? Uh, where, where, uh, where lives my poor heart? She'll be poor indeed, now I want limbs to get where on to feed. Limbs? That's so not hands, man. Thou shall never see a shoemaker want bread, though he may be, have three fingers on a hand. Yet all this while I hear not of my Jane. Oh, Rafe, your wife, uh, Purdy, we know not what's to come of her, no... She was here a while, and because she was married, grew more stately than became her. Well, I checked her and so forth, and away she flung, never returned, nor said by no born. So as I tell you, oh, how oh, she's not so come yet. No, forsooth. And so as we heard not of her, let that pass. Oh, hands, look if so uh, become. Yo, yo, I shall. So as I said. It is hands and folk. Three eggs, I think. Yeah, it's three eggs, I smell like. 
Uh, uh, but, mistress, uh, mm. be ruled by me and do not speak so puningly. Says her worship speaks so, not she. Oh. Now, faith, mistress, speak me in the old key. To it for it. Ply your business, Hodge. I'll fill your bellies with good cheer till they cry twang. <laughs> See, my little brother. Here comes my master. Master! Master! Hey! Oh, welcome home, Master Sleeve. I pray God continue you in health and wealth. <laughs> See here, my Maggie, a chain. A gold chain for Simon Eyre. Oh, I shall make thee a lady. Here's a French hood for thee. On with it, on with it. Here, sugar. Bless thy brows with this flap of a shoulder of mutton to make thee look lovely. Where be my fine men? Here, master. I'll make over my shop and tools to thee. Oh, master. Thou shalt be the foreman. Oh, foreman. Hands. Thou shalt have an hundred for the twenty gold coins thou lent for. Oh, uh, be as mad knaves as your master Simair hath been, and you shall live to be sheriffs of London. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does thou like me, Marjorie? Oh, Prince am I none, yet am I princely born. Work, hodge, hands. I for this. Uh, what says your word? Your master sleep. Now worship and honour your Babylonian knaves for the gentle craft. Oh, but I forget myself. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm bidden by the Lord Mayor to dinner to Old Ford. He come before, and I must after. Come, heads, on with your thinking. Oh, oh, oh. Now, my fine sojourns, my fine fur, my dapper hodge, my honest hands. Oh. Some device, some odd crotchet, a Morris or such like, for the honour of the gentleman shoemaker. Oh, 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 come, heads, away. Shut up the shop, knaves, and make holiday. Meet me at Old Ford! Oh, Thank your lordship. Would our bad cheer were worth the thanks you give? Oh, good cheer, my lord mayor. Fine cheer. Fine house. Fine walls. Mm. All fine and neat. Now, by my trust, as me good as all my brethren, such a bad cap fellow as thyself is entering the house. Ah, but my lord, he must learn now to put on gravity. Peace, Maggie, a fig for gravity. When I go to Guildhall in my scarlet gown, I look as demurely as a saint and speak as gravely as a justice. But now I'm here at Old Ford, at my good Lord Mayor's house. Let it go by. Vanish, Maggie. <laughs> no, I'll be very <laughs> away with flip flap. <laughs> what, honey? <laughs> prince am I none yet am I prince born. <laughs> Uh, what says my Lord Mayor? I had rather than a thousand pound. I had an heart, but half so light as yours. Why, what, what should I do, my Lord? A pound of care pays not a dram of debt. Mm. <laughs> no, let, let's be merry while we're young. Old age, sack and sugar will steal upon us ere we're aware. Aye, it's well done. Mistress Eyre, pray give good counsel to my daughter. I hope Mistress Rose will have the grace to take nothing that's bad. Pray God she do. For your faith, Mistress Eyre, keep still crossing oh, me. Oh, father. There came of late a proper gentleman of fair revenues, whom gladly I would call my son-in-law. But my fine cockney would have none of him. Oh, but... Rose, you'll prove a coxcomb ere you die. A courtier or no man must please your eyes. Oh, be ruled by me. Yes, Master Eyre. Mm, that right for a man. Marry not with a boy. There's no more hair on his face than thou hast on thy cheeks. A courtier, says your father. Wash, go by. Now, stand not up in pishery pashery. Those <laughs> silken fellows are but painted images. Outsides, outsides, Rose. Now, their inner linings are torn. <laughs> no, my fine mouse. <laughs> Marry me with a gentleman grocer like my Lord Mayor, your father. A grocer's a sweet trade. Mm. 
plum. Plum. <laughs> Had I a son or daughter should marry out of the generation and blood of the shoemakers, he should pack. What the gentle trade is a living for a man through Europe, through the world. What noise is this? Oh, my Lord Mayor, uh, a crew of good fellows that for love to your honour are come hither with a Morris dance. Come in, my Mesopotamians, cheerily. Yonder the seamster's shop. 
And there my fair Jane sits, plying her needle as she sings. She's fair and lovely, but she is not mine. Oh, would she were. I am unfortunate. I still love one, yet nobody loves me. I muse in other men what women see that I so want. Fine Mistress Rose was coy and Jane too chaste. And for she thinks me wanton, she denies to cheer my cold heart with her sunny eyes. It does me good to stand unseen to see her. I oft have stood in frosty evenings, a light burning by her, enduring biting cold, only to eye her. Muffled, I'll pass along, and by that try, whether she know me. Sir, what is it you buy? What is it you lack, sir? Calico or lawn, fine cambric shirts or bands? What will you buy? That which thou wilt not sell. Please get our try. How do you sell this handkerchief? Oh, my stand. Too cheap. And how these ruffs? Cheap, too. And how this band? Cheap, too. Oh, cheap. Tell you then this hand. That is so much cost. Let go my hand. I will do any task at your command. I would let go this beauty. Were I not enjoined to disobey you by a power that controls kings, I love you. So, now part. With hands I may, but never with my heart. In faith, I love you. I believe you do. Shall a true love in me breed hate in you? Oh, I hate you not. Then you must love. I do. What are you better now? I love not you. Ah, Jane... Pressed was he to these bitter wars in France. My husband pressed for France. What was his name? Rafe Damport. Damport? Aye. Here's a letter sent from France to me. It does contain the names that have been slain in every fight. Oh, nephew, lately went to France. I have not seen him. Trust me, Sir Roger Oatley. Here I did hope to find him in your house. Lodge in my house, say you? I let you know how careful I have been to keep my daughter free from all conference or speech of him. Oh, Lord, help for God's sake, my mistress, oh, my young mistress. Where is thy mistress? What's become of her? She's gone. She's fled. Gone? Whither is she fled? I know not, forsooth. She's fled out of doors with hands, the shoemaker. I saw them scud, 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 a pace, a pace. Fled with a shoemaker? Can this be true? Oh, Lord, sir, as true as God's in heaven. I love turn shoemaker. I am glad of this. A Fleming Butterbox, a shoemaker? Will she forget her birth, requite my care with such ingratitude? Scorn she, young Hammond, to love a honeykin, a needy knave? Well... Let her fly. I'll not fly after her. Let her starve if she will. She's none of mine. Be not so cruel, Sir Roger. I'll not account of her as of my child. Was there no better object for her eyes but a foul, drunken, lover, swill belly, a shoemaker? Oh, that's brave. The eye for suit is a very bright shoe, and it's fit as a pudding. Aye. Uh, 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 how now? What name is this? Uh, from whence cometh thou? No, oh, nice, sir. I am Perk the Shoemaker, lusty Yodge's chief, lusty journeyman. I come here to take up the pretty leg of sweet Mistress Rose, and thus hoping your worship is in, as good help as I was at the making thereof, I'll bid you farewell. Yours, Perk. Save. Oh, I'll so bob them, though, my master heir is Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor? Aye, by death a certain alderman, Lord Mayor of London. Uh, tell me, sir, knowst thou one hands a shoemaker? Hangs Shoemaker. Oh, yes. Uh, stay. Yes, I have him. I'll tell you what, I'd speak it in secret. Mistress Rose and he, by this time, no, not so, but shortly, ought to come over one another with, can you dance, the shaking of the sheets. Where are they to be married? Dost thou know the church? I never go to church, but uh, I know the name of it. It is a swearing church. Oh, by my faith. It, that, that is... By my faith, church, under Paul's cross. Upon my life, my lovely lady walks in the disguise of this Dutch shoemaker. My mind misgives me now, tis so, indeed. My nephew speaks the language, knows the trade. Let me request your company, my lord. Together we'll refrain their headstrong rashness. And you must rise betimes, for they mean to fall where I pass and repass, pindy-pandy, which hand will you have very early? My lord of Lincoln. 
This night accept your lodging in my house. The earlier shall we stir, and at some face prevent this giddy harebrained nuptial. Yes. This traffic of hot love shall yield cold gains. They ban our loves, and we will forbid their bets. Ha <laughs> ha! Here's no craft in the gentle craft. It's soft now. These two goals will be at St. Faith Church tomorrow morning to take Master Bridegroom and Mistress Bride napping. And they, in the meantime, shall chop up the matter at the Savoy. But the best sport is, Sir Roger Oakley will find my fellow lame rape's wife going to marry a gentleman, and he'll stop her instead of his daughter. Oh, brave, there will be fine tickling sport! <laughs> Nothing, am not I Simair? Is not Simair now Lord Mayor of London? Fear nothing, Hans. This is the morning, say my bully, my honest Hans, is it not? This is the morning that must make us too happy or miserable. Therefore, if oh, you play with these ifs and ands, hands and these etc. By mine honour, Roland Lacey, none but the king shall wrong thee. Come, fear nothing, Rose. Let them all say what they can, dainty. Come thou to me. Laughs the Oh, good, my lord. Stand her, friendly. What can you bear? Why, my sweet lady, Maggie, think you Simon here can forget his fine Dutch journeyman? No, va. <laughs> Fie, I scorn it. It shall never be cast in my teeth that I was unthankful. Lady Maggie, that's mm. never covered thy Saracen's head with his French flap, nor loading thy bum with his farthingale, his trash, trumpery vanity. <laughs> Simon Eyre had never walked in a red petticoat, nor worn a chain of gold, but from a fine journeyman's coins. And shall I leave him? No. Prince am I none, uh, yet bear a princely mind. My lord, it's time for us to depart from him. Lady Maggie, mm. Lady Maggie, I'll take you two or three of my pie crust eaters, my... Buff jerking varlets yes. that do walk in black gowns at Simon Hare's heels. Take them, good lady Maggie. Oh. Trip and go, my brown queen of periwigs, with my delicate rose and my jolly Roland to the Savoy. <laughs> See them linked, countenance the marriage, and when it's done, cling, cling together, you Hamborough turtle doves. <laughs> I'll bear you out. Come to Simon Hare, come. Dwell with me. Hands, thou shalt eat minced pies and march pain. <laughs> Rose away, cricket. Good, Trip master. and go, my lady Maggie, to the Savoy. Hands, wed and to bed. <laughs> kiss, kiss and away. Go, vanish. Uh -huh, farewell, my lord. Make haste, sweet love. Uh -huh. She's vain the deed were done. Come, Mr. Crow, <laughs> faster than deer will run. Go, vanish, vanish. <laughs> A vaunt, <bond>, I say. <laughs> By the Lord of Ludgate, <laughs> it's a mad life to be a Lord Mayor. It's a stirring life, a fine life, a velvet life, a careful life. <laughs> well, Simon Eyre, yet set a good face on it in the honor of St. Hugh. A soft, this day my fellow princes of London come to dine with me. They shall have fine cheer, gentlemanlike cheer. I promise the mad Cappadocians, when we all served at the country together, that if ever I came to be mayor of London, I would feast them all. And I'll do it. I'll do it by the life of Pharaoh. By this beard, Simair will be no flincher. Besides, I procured that upon every Shrove Tuesday, at the sound of the pancake bell, my fine dapper Assyrian lads shall clap up their shop windows and away. Boys, that day are you free. Let masters care, and princesses shall pray for Simon Eyre. This is the day, and this day they shall do it. They shall do it. <laughs>
my masters, as we are the brain floods of the shoemakers, heirs apparent to St. Hugh and perpetual benefactors to all good fellows, race shall have no wrong. Oh, and as for Master Ammon, neither Ammon nor Angman shall wrong thee in London race. No. This not our old master, heir, Lord Mayor. Speak, my heart. Speak the bullish speech. Yonder they come. Sam, toot my heart. First, let me speak first. No, race, let me. Ammon, whither away so early? Unmannerly rules play. What's that to be? To win, sir? Yes, sir. And to me and others. Aye. Good morrow, Jane. How dost thou? Villain, hands off. How dare you touch my love? Hello, Hold me heart, oh! Touch her, Hammond. Yea, oh. her, Hammond. Yay, and more than that, we'll carry her away with us. My masters and gentlemen, never draw your bird spits. Shoemakers are steel to the back. Men, every inch of them. All spirit. Well, and what of all this? I'll show you. Jane, dost thou know this man? Tis Rafe, I can tell thee. Nay, tis he in faith, though he be lame by the wars. Yet look not strange, Rondwin. Holding about the neck and kissing. Thou seest, he lives. Come, lads, pack home with him. Ray! Hey, who comes here? Yonder's a lying pilot, Master So. Come hither, sirrah. I, sir, I am sirrah. Uh, you mean me, do you not? Well, is my nephew married? Is he married? God give him joy. I'm glad of it. They have a fair day. Villain, thou toast me that my daughter Rose this morning should be married at St. Pete. We have watched there these three hours at the least, yet see we know such things. Truly, I am sorry for you. A bride's a pretty thing. Come to the purpose. Here are the bride and bridegroom you look for, I hope. What? Have I found your million? And Sans, what mean you? Are you mad? I hope you cannot enforce my wife from me. Your wife? Yea, my wife. And therefore the proudest of you that lays hands on her first, I'll lay my crush across his pate. True him, lame right. Here's bride sport. Aye. A Roger Oakley. Is this your daughter? No, nor this your nephew. My lord of Lincoln, we are both abused by this base, crafty varlet. Aye, yeah, for sooth, no varlet, for sooth, no base, no crafty neither, but of that gentle craft. Villain, I'll have thee punished for this wrong. Me lord, I come to bring unwelcome news. Your nephew Lacey and your daughter Rose, early this morning wedded at the Savoy. No. None being present but the Lady Mayoress. Besides, I learnt among the officers... The mayor vows to stand in their defense against any that shall seek to cross the mat. But I'll prevent him. Come, Sir Roger Oakley. The king will do us justice in this cause. Farewell, fool. <laughs> <laughs> this matter <laughs> is answered. <laughs> come, Rafe, home with thy wife. <laughs> ah, come, we find shoemakers. Let's to our masters, the new Lord Mayor, and their swagger this throw Tuesday. I promise you wine enough for mad keeps the cellar. Oh, oh, yeah, that is a good place. <laughs> and I'll promise you meat enough for simpering Susan keeps the larder. All of it of riddles, me brave soldiers. Follow your captain. Oh, brave. Hark! Hark! The pancake bell rings. The pancake bell! Oh, open the doors, my heart. Shut up the windows. Keep in the house. Let out the pancakes. Oh, 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 rare, my heart. Now, let's march together for the honor of St. Jude to the great new hall in Gracious Street Corner, which our master, the new Lord Mayor, has built. All the crew of good fellows and princesses have marched to dine at my Lord Mayor's cost today. Our musical bells still. Our hearts, oh, my brethren, let's cheer for the heavens. Penison past these walk up and down, putting off like sergeants. Beef and brewers come marching in dry pats. Fritters and pancakes come trowling in in wheelbarrows. Pins and oranges hopping in porters' baskets. Coughlings in scuttles. And tarts and custards come quavering in in malt shovels. Oh, march fair, my heart. How rare. Come, my fine arch, 
Charlie, gentlemen, shoemakers. Where were these cannibals, these violets, my officers? Let them all walk and wait upon my brethren, the prentices of London. Oh, my lord, it'll be rare. Please, no, no. Where is uh, uh, now, Lady Maggie. Oh, the king, the king's most excellent majesty's new crown. Oh, okay. yeah. Is my sovereign come? Vanish, my tall shoemakers, my nimble brethren. Look to my guests, apprentices. Get it, stay a little, stay a little now. And our hands, how looks my little rose? Let me request you to remember me. I know your honour easily may obtain free pardon of the king for me and Rose, and reconcile me to my uncle's grace. Have done, my good hands, my honest journeyman. Look cheerily. I'll fall upon both my knees to lay be as hard as horn, but I'll get thy pardon. Good my lord, have a care what you speak to his majesty. Away, you easily will tell you white pot. Hence, you hopper ass, oh. your barley pudding full of maggots, your broiled carbonado, avoid, avoid, oh. avoid, Mephistopheles. Shall Sim e'er learn to speak of you, Lady Maggie? Vanish, Mother Miniver Cap. Vanish, go, slip and go. Meddle with your partlets and your fishery fashery, your flues and your whirligigs. Go, rub. Go out of mine alley. Simair knows how to speak to a pope, to Sultan Solomon, to Chamberlain, and they were here. And shall I melt? Shall I droop before my sovereign? No. <laughs> Brethren, the gentlemen shoemakers shall set your sweet majesty's image cheek by jowl by St. Hugh for this honor you've done, poor Simon Eyre. Tell me, Pete Medea, how old art thou? My liege, a very boy, a, a stripling, a young kid. You see not a white hair on my head nor a gray in this beard. Every hair, I assure thy majesty, that sticks in this beard. Simair values at the king of Babylon's ransom. Tamachem's beard was a rubbing brush to it. <laughs> Yet I'll shave it off and stuff tennis balls with it to please my bully king. But all this while I do not know your age. My liege, I am six and fifty years old. Yet I can cry <laughs> with a sound heart for the honor of St. Hugh. Mark this old wench, my king. I, I danced the shaking of the sheets with her six and thirty years ago. Oh. And, and yet I hope to get two or three young lord mayors ere I die. <laughs> oh, I'm lusty still, simmer still. Care and cold lodging brings white hairs. My sweet majesty, let care vanish. Cast it upon thy nobles. It will make thee look always young, like Apollo, and cry, Move, my gracious lord. Lincoln, what news with you? My gracious lord, have care on yourself, for there are traitors here. <laughs> traitors in my house? God forbid. Whether my officers, I'll spend my soul ere my king feel harm. Where is the traitor, Lincoln? Here he stands. My nephew, Roland Lizzie. Lincoln, speak. What canst thou lay unto thy nephew's charge? Miss, my dear liege, your grace to do me honor heaped upon the head of this degenerate boy desert his favors. You made choice of him to be commander over powers in France. But Good he... Lincoln, pretty for the while. I know how lazy did neglect our love. It was not a base want of true valor's fire that held him out of France, but love's desire. I will not bear his shame upon my back. Nor shalt thou, Lincoln. I forgive you both. Then, good my liege, forbid the boy to wed, one whose mean birth will much disgrace his bed. Are they not married? No, my liege, we are. Oh. Shall I divorce them, then? You hear them, Lincoln? Yea, my liege, I do. Yet canst thou find it in the heart to part these two? Who seeks besides you to divorce these lovers? I do, my gracious lord. I am her father. Sir Roger Oakley, our last mayor, I think. The same, my liege. Would you offend love's laws? Well, you shall have your wills. Soft, let me see. You are both married, they say. Then, upon thy life, I charge thee not to call this woman wife. Oh, 
my most gracious lord, I kneel to thee. Nay, Rose, this bridegroom cannot be your bride. Oh, my liege. Are you pleased, Lincoln? Yes, my lord. Are you pleased? Yes, my lord. Then must my heart be eased. For credit me, my conscience lives in pain till these who might divorce be joined again. Lacey, give me thy hand. My liege. Rose, lend me thy. Sir. Be what you would be. Kiss now. So, that's fine. At night, lovers to bed. Now, let me see. Which of you all mislikes this harmony? What says my mad Lord Mayor to all this love? Oh, my liege. This honor you've done to my fine journeyman here, Roland Lacey, and all these favors which you've shown to me this day in my poor house, will make Simon Eyre live longer by one dozen of warm summers more than he should. Now, now, my mad lady, speak peace. Speak softly. Yonder is the king. Mad Simon, would they anything with us? Mum, mad lady, it's not a word. I'll do it. I want and show. I'll do it. They are all beggars, my liege. All for themselves and I for them all, on both my knees do entreat your grace would vouchsafe to taste of a poor banquet that stands sweetly waiting for your sweet presence. There I will taste of thy banquet and will say, I have not met more pleasure on a day. <laughs> That was The Shoemaker's Holiday, or A Pleasant Comedy of the Gentle Craft by Thomas Decker, who may well have been born 400 years ago this year. The part of Simon Eyre, the shoemaker who became Lord Mayor of London, was played by the late Sir Donald Wolfitt. The former Lord Mayor, Sir Roger Oatley, was played by Felix Felton. Sir Hugh Lacey, Earl of Lincoln, by Philip Lever, and his nephew, Roland Lacey, by Dennis Quilley. Marjorie, Eyre's wife, was played by Vivian Chatterton. Hodge, Eyre's foreman, by Charles Leno. His journeyman, Firk, by Geoffrey Matthews. Rafe, by John Brining. And Rafe's wife, Jane, by Eva Haddon. Rose Oatley was played by Janet Richer. Her maid, Sybil, by Betty Bascom. Master Hammond, by Alistair Duncan. Master Warner by Godfrey Kenton, a Dutch skipper by George Merritt, Dodger, a servant to the Earl of Lincoln by Dennis Gosher, a serving man by Anthony Vickers, and the King by Charles Simon. The music was composed by John Hotchkiss and played by the Welbeck Orchestra leader Vera Kantrovich, conducted by the composer. The Shoemaker's Holiday was adapted for radio and produced by Raymond Rakes. <laughs>